All right, why don't you start with number one? Oh, can't get all of it on there, can I? All right. Which of the following? <laughs> Which of the following molecules contains a central atom with sp2 hybridization? So I'll, I'll scroll as we go. You don't happen to have an extra, like any extra copies of that would be a good idea. Um, kind of doubt. I think I made copies of the other one. I should have. I just, a lot of the time, like whenever you work a question out, I'll work it out on my paper as well, so I can say from that later. Let me see. Not there. It's going to be a simple matter to print out extra. I need them. I'll check and be sure I don't already have some printed. No. In fact, I can do that right from here. Let's see. Where's the print icon? There it is. I'll just send it in here. Yeah. Free copies? Makes sense. Question is, how long is it going to take to print it? Because they. For some reason, PDF conversion files like this, they must be huge files. Uh, it only prints on one side, so it's going to be 21 pages. It's already started. Good. Stapler out.
Pero... Okay. Uh, okay. Where was I? SP two hybridization. So SP two is going to need three orbitals. That means trigonal planar. Remember that's an electronic structure. So we've got to look at each one and actually it looks to me like um, we've been given, these are the Lewis dot structures. So we've been given everything we need to know here. <clears throat> All right, this is four groups. So it's tetrahedral, that's SP3. That's SP3. Um, these guys don't need to be hybridized. Oh, there we go. That's sp2. This is tetrahedral. I've got four. And this has one, two, three, four. Okay, so each one of these is tetrahedral. This one is sp. Because it's only got two. Okay, so we found our answer. It's boron trifluoride. C is the best for because of the pair below. Which one? This one? C. 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 Yeah. Yes. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And that low pair goes into one of the sp3 hybrid orbitals. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Well, there's a mistake. This should be a subscript. There. Wait a minute. Well, it's not even the same as this one. Is that the same as the one you got? Is that is that the same? Yeah. Okay. Where did I get this one? How many versions of this thing do I have? Well, I can't use that. <laughs> we'll stick. If yours is like this one, we'll stick with this one. Um, which statement about uh, uh, diatomic nitrogen is false? It's a gas at room temperature. Yeah, I mean, we're breathing it. It must be a gas. Oxidation state is plus three on one nitrogen and minus three on the other. That's false. Right? Oh, oxidation state. Right. So what we're saying is, I was for a second I was thinking um, formal charge. Oxidation state is a different idea. On elements that are in their native state at uh, 25 degrees in one atmosphere, um, they're always zero oxidation state. <clears throat> so uh, still, this is false. While we're on this topic, what would the uh, uh, formal charge be? Nitrogen comes in with five electrons each. How many does it have now? One, two, three, four, five. Minus five. So it's zero formal charge also. 
Well, we found our false one. It has one sigma and two pi bonds. Yep. Triple bond. You can only have one sigma bond, but you can have one or two. I've never heard of a sigma and three pi's. I guess it's possible. Uh, so this one's true. They can combine with H2 to form, yeah, ammonia. That's right. Haber Bosch process. It has two pairs of non bonding electrons. Yep. One pair on one nitrogen, one pair on the other. So B is the false one. And a bit of scroll. Consider the molecule of the following hybridization choices. What's the hybridization of carbon atom that is double bonded to oxygen? So they're talking about this one. Okay. Um, we can't just assume that this is the proper Lewis structure. So what we need to do is say, all right, does carbon have an octet? Two, four, six, eight. Yeah. So it's probably no lone pairs. Uh, that should be true because carbon is in the second period, which means it's N equals two, which means there are no D orbitals available. So it can't exceed, and it's obviously not less than octet. So that's probably true. So one, two, three groups is um, trigonal planar, which is SB2. Uh, that makes it B. Let's see. Four. What's the hybridization of the nitrogen atom? Oh, it's the same problem, just a different tactic. Hybridization of nitrogen. Okay, in this case, we do need to say, all right, are there any lone pairs? Yeah. Nitrogen will have a lone pair there. That's on two, four, six, eight. Gives nitrogen its octet. So that means nitrogen is linear and sp hybridized right here okay um that one's tetrahedral this one's tetrahedral so those would be sp3s in case the next one no the next one doesn't matter specify the hybridization of each carbon atom in the following so you've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. All right, so this one's gonna be, it's got two hybrids, one, two in this group. So this one is SP2, that's one, two, three, that one's SP2. One, two, three, that one's SP2. This one's one, two, three, four. SP3. And this one is 1, 2. SP. So SP. Not that one, not that one, not that one. Three SP2s, yep. And then an SP3 and an SP. So A is the answer. This one's about to crack out. Got this one. Hybridization of selenium in, in SEF6. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six fluorines. So I'm uh, following the procedure. In order to determine hybridization, you've got to draw the Lewis dot structure. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six times seven is 42 for fluorine. Selenium is in oxygen's group, so it has six. 48 electrons. So if we have, uh, let's say two, four, six, eight around each fluorine, then eight times six is 48. Okay. So if we just fill up the octet on all the fluorines, we have used up all our electrons. Now, what's the structure? Well, it has six groups, so it has to be octahedral, right? Octahedral needs six hybridized orbitals, which means, well, if we use S and a P, three of the P's, that only gives us four. So we've got to go two D's to pick up six. Now, is that possible? Selenium. Yeah, it's in the fourth period. It has access to 4D orbital. So we're good to go there. Uh, let's see. Here it is E, D2SP3. How about PBCL4? Let's see. Lead is, where is it? There it is. It's in carbon's group. So it has four. And then we have four times seven is 28. We have 32. There we go. Two, four, six, eight. That's 24. Right. Six more around each chlorine. Four times six is 24, right? So we use it all up. So lead has to be one, two, three, four, sp3 hybridized, right? Wait a minute. Did I do that right? Lead. Yeah, that is four. Oh, my mistake. Two, four, six. That's right. Four. One, two, three, four times seven is 28. 28 and four is 32. That's right. We used up two, four, six, eight. 24. Two, four, six. Six times four is 24. So it should be SP3, correct? Oh, none of these. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man, it's only 130. About eight. This could give you some trouble. Eight. This is the skeleton of the molecule. Right? So we know that there's there are two carbons here and then carbon on each one and then a nitrogen out here at the end. So how many of the atoms are sp hybridized, which means how many are linear? So if we say one, two, three, four, five, six carbons is 24 electrons, six times four, and then one, two, three, four times five is 20. We have 44 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Right. In the bonds. So that's uh, 26. Okay, so if we start from the outside, we do do, 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 do. And we have four of those, so four times six is 24, right? That's two electrons, extra electrons that we need. I didn't put the all around each one of those, but they should have six electrons. So the nitrogens then are uh, Yeah, that's right. 
So where are we going to put the two? If we put the two electrons here, God, we might as well put them here or here or here. Then let's say, how are we going to make an octet? Right? We don't want to move two electrons back here to make an octet. That leaves everybody else out. I suggest we put them here. Then um, we can make an octet out of each one of these by just moving these two over here, making a triple bond. So that's two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. So this carbon and this nitrogen then would have octets. Same thing all the way around. Then we've got these extra two here. Right? We've only got two, four, six. If we move those there, that, then we've got two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Everybody's happy. That's the only way I can figure to do this molecule with triple bonds here, 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 and here. And still have a lone pair around each nitrogen. That would give us octets for everybody. Um, okay, so now the question which are linear? This one is linear. One, two. How about this one? One, two, that was linear. So how many of the atoms are sp hybridized? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them are sp hybridized in this scenario. So these are sp2 hybridized. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Now they didn't show us any hydrogens here. And I assume that there are no hydrogens. That's the only other possibility. So that one, that would probably give a student trouble. You know, see that for the first time. Like, where do I go from here? I mean, it's not like it follows the rules because we work from the outside in. That means the extra pair could go here, 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 or here. Then we can't make octets for everybody. So we have to move it over here. All right. Let's see about number nine. A pi bond is the result of <laughs> overlap two S orbitals. You always get sigmas when you overlap two S orbitals. Overlap an S orbital and the P orbital. Not likely. S orbital spherical, P orbital is dumbbell. You're not going to get that spherical distribution of an S orbital to um, go off axis to overlap with a pi, with a P. You need two P orbitals. Overlap of two P orbitals along their axis. If you do that, you got a sigma bond because it's, it's directly between the atoms. It has to be off axis, two parallel P orbitals will overlap to produce a pi bond. Okay. Scroll every one. It looks like 11 uses the same model. Yep. Is that 10 and 11? Okay, so let me do this one. So, um, to understand what we have here, I probably mentioned it before, but when we draw a structure like this, in organic chemistry, we're saying that's a carbon, that's a carbon, 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 carbon. And typically what you'll see, I'll give you a little taste of organic. When carbon is bonded to anything, it usually forms four bonds of some kind. 
either four singles, a double, and and uh, two singles, or triple and one single, whatever it takes. And then um, usually it's with another carbon. So if there are any bonds unused to carbons, we fill them with hydrogens. So we don't write hydrogens in here when actually we mean there's one hydrogen there, 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 there. So that means one, two, three, four, two, four, six, eight. That's what that structure means. And of course, with this down here, we know it's got hydrogens in there. But each hydrogen at a carbon. So for this one, there'd be two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one, 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 one. And here would be two, 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 two hydrogens, and then one and one there. That's why you have different numbers of hydrogens for each one. Okay, for that, that explanation, which molecules have P orbitals that share an electron pair to create pi bonding? Okay, well, that's, Actually, I didn't need to say all that to answer this question. Whenever you're looking for pi bonds, look for doubles and triples, right? Which molecules have P orbitals that share an electron pair? Oh, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Anywhere you have a double bond in these molecules, you have a pi, you have a pi bond. So that's all of them. They all have pi bonds. Let's see what the next one says. Let's see, can I flip it? Yeah, there we go. Okay, which molecules have equivalent carbon-carbon bonds throughout the molecule? What we mean here is equivalent length and energy. That's what's implied when we say equivalent bonds. Um, which ones have equivalent bonds? This one has equivalent bonds all the way around, even though we show that's double and single. Remember with the Lewis dot structure, an equivalent structure for this would be a double there, a double there, and a double there, and the others are single. Just rotate the doubles around and you get an equivalent structure. So when that happens, we're faced with resonance. And what's that, that's, what that is saying is that the actual would be closer to that. Make them all equal. So in that case, this is the only one that has equivalent carbon-carbon bonds throughout the molecule. These actually do have different bonds. Right? These singles here are different than that double which kind of puts a strain on the molecule. The equivalent bonds will be better. <clears throat> um, these two, let's see. Yeah, this one, this one, and this one are equal si si single bonds. This one and this one um, delocalize with that one. So these bonds would be equal to each other right there. This one doesn't have the opportunity. What that does, especially when you can delocalize electrons and smear them out like this one, you get a lower energy and a more stable molecule. So this adds a little bit of stability to the molecule, but not as much as that. And this one adds nothing. You can't smear with that one. Um, you can smear with this one because it's in a class of compounds called aromatic. They're extremely stable. This one where you have a double, single, double in line with one another, you get, um, paint myself into a corner again. I forget the name now. If I don't remember before the end, I'll look it up and put it in the video as a subscript. What I was getting at was you can have long chains of carbon molecules like this 
And whenever you have a double, single, double, single, double, you get delocalization of the electrons around those bonds. That lowers the energy. So the more of these you have in a molecule, the lower the absorption energy. So you can go from a molecule that absorbs in the ultraviolet, and if you add more of these, conjugated, the conjugated double bonds, when you add more of those, you lower the, the uh, wavelength. I see, you increase the wavelength, lower the energy of the absorption. So you can take a molecule, and as you add double bonds, you shift its absorption spectrum into the visible range. And you can see the colors. So when you see uh, something like a, a crawfish, right, they got that red color in their carapace, red, orange. It's because of these conjugated double bonds in the molecules in their, in their carapace. Have lots of them. Actually, the molecules in a, in a crawfish shell are second cousins actually first cousins, to uh, beta carotene, vitamin A. It does the same thing. That's why it's orange. Anyway, let's move ahead. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find different ones, and then I can start skipping. The electron configuration of a particular diatomic species of a diatomic, oh, molecular orbitals to the asterisks. So this is, this is something we didn't look at before, the shorthand version. We just drew the uh, energy diagram. Remember that? This is the shorthand version, similar to electronic configuration for individual atoms. Okay? So the lower energy is going to be on this side, and we increase the energy from left to right. So we have the sigma from the 2s, we have a sigma star from a 2s combination, right? The energy here, if we have a, a 2s here and a 2s here, then they're going to combine to make right, a sigma and a sigma star. So that's what we're looking at. This one is there, this one is here. That means that this one has two electrons, it's full. This one has two, it's full, full, two Ps. It's full. Right? Because it will have, let's see, uh, sigma, pi, 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 and a pi star, pi star. And there's also a sigma star up here. So we'll have from the p orbitals, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, two p and two p. Then we'll make see, is that the right number? Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have to conserve the numbers. So this one is your sigma, this one's your pi, this one's your pi star. And this is your sigma star. Okay. So um, we've got, um, let's see, this like that, like that, like that, like that. Four here and two here, one there, one there. Okay. What's the bond order for this species? Actually, I didn't need to draw that to do the bond order. <laughs> you should take um, two, four, six, eight, and minus two, four, divided by two. So that's two. Right? So the bond order is two. Okay. Um, let's see, is this something new? As the bond order of the bond increases, the bond energy increases, and the bond length decreases. 
If you increase the energy of bond, it draws the nuclei closer together. So that would be C, increases, decreases. Uh, okay, configuration here, the molecular orbital description for the ground state of, oh, okay. The ground state of what? Well, notice that this is gonna be diatonic, right? It has to be, if it's, and these are our examples here, these diatomic molecules or ions. So what we wanna do is say, okay, what was this derived from? Well, what it did was it left out the one S's, but that's okay because lithium is in the second. Both beryllium, boron, carbon, they're all in the second. So we, need, we don't need to consider the one S molecular orbitals. Like we only need to look at the valence shells. So um, we've got two, four, six, six valence electrons. Okay. So that means that we had to have six electrons donated from uh, a total of six donated from both of the partners in this diatomic. So let's look from lithium, how many we got? We got one and one, that's only two. And then we subtract one. So we really only got one. Beryllium has uh, two and two, that's four, that's not enough. Boron has three and three, that's six. That's it right there. This would be two, two more be eight, and this would be eight. So actually these are isoelectronic, but boron answers the question. It's got three and three, six electrons. All we had to do was count how many here and how many were provided by either one of the, any one of those, and boron is the best answer. All right, let's see. Yeah, we can still see that one. Uh, how many unpaired electrons in the F, in the diatomic two plus ion for fluorine? based on the molecular orbitals and order of the molecular orbitals are. Okay, so we're giving these this shortcut without the number of electrons in it. So what we need to do is add up the electrons. So we've got two fluorines, right? So it would be, if they were neutral, we'd have how many? Well, we're starting with the twos, so we only have to consider the valence. So it's seven each, right? And it's a halogen. So they're gonna be 14 electrons, but we're making an ion out of it, two plus. That means we only have 12 electrons, okay? All right, so um, we start filling them up, right? Two S, it can hold two. This one can hold two. P's can hold four, so that's eight. We have four more. Here we go. Oh, excuse me. My mistake. That's a sigma. I can only hold two. Sorry. Then the, the pi's have two degenerates from P. So we can have, we have like that, like that, two, four, six. Six left over. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, those are full. Then we have two more left over. They go right here. So uh, the order of the molecular, let's see, how many unpaired electrons in the F2? Uh, so we've used them up before we get to this one. There are two unpaired electrons right here. Because this one would be like that, like that. According to Hun's rule. Okay. Mm. 
The following statements concern molecules that require resonance, which is true. The pi bonding is most clearly delocalized. Okay, yeah, examples of that were um, the benzene molecule and the uh, nitrate ion, you know, three, two minus. They all have delocalized and the pi bonding is delocalized. This was when we were talking about sort of a hybrid between the molecular orbital and the valence bond theory. Sigma bonding is most clearly, no, sigma bonding never delocalizes. It's between two atoms and that's it. Both sigma and pi delocalize, oh, sorry. The benzene molecule is best described by the MO theory. So yeah. The reason being that if we describe it with a valence bond theory, we have to resonate it. But if we use the molecular orbital theory, uh, one structure and one electronic diagram is sufficient. We don't have to do any tweaking. Yeah, he is, D and E can't both be right. So A and D are the best answers for this one, both A and D. All right, so maybe we can start, start skipping. Which of the five molecules are, or ions does not contain a central atom with sp2 hybridization? Maybe we better look at this one. It's got quite a mix. Uh, not contained, not contained sp2. So nitrate, NO3 minus. That's uh, three times six is 18, plus five is 23, plus one is 24. So N, O, 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 two, four, six, 18. So six times three is 18, right? Yeah, 18. Uh, oh, excuse me. What did I forget to do? I forgot to add that electron. 25, 2, let's see. 8 times 3 is 24. There we go. So that would be and the problem with these. Did I do that right? Five, six times three is 20. No, 24 is right. Right, if I add that electron to this one, and this one's six, and now that one's six. Four times six is 24. All right, so it should have been. Eight times three is 24, it's like that. That's trigonal planar. This one is the SP2. Yeah, okay, so that was, we're looking for the one that's not. How about ozone? You have to know what ozone is. All right, so it's three times six is 18, uh, minus four is 14. That's trigonal plane, SP2 hybridized. How about, what's this one? The hydronium ion, remember that one? So oxygen's in the center, one, two, three. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So it's uh, one, two, three, plus six is nine. Oops, we're missing one, so it's eight. So two, four, six, eight. That's it. This one's SP3 hybridized. There's four groups. Yeah, this might be the other one. 
I'm sorry. This might be the wrong idea. This one says we need to get paid in the pension branch. This one says it's uh, something that's for the college. Oh, the one we're working on now says New River. Yeah. Is it sticking with this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we did that. You printed this is the exact copy of the one you're doing right now, right? I, I was trying to. Yeah, it has all the, the answers and stuff, even on the extended response at the end. All of them are where they're already written out in this paper. Is this the review? It says it's the New River Community and Technical or Technical College Review. It should be the same stuff, I would imagine. Probably. It looks pretty close to the other. Uh, let's see, we did that one already. We found the answer. This one. Hydromia. That's SP3 hybridized. Uh, C2H4, the valence. The valence molecule, the, in the molecule of C2H4, the valence orbitals of the carbon atom are assumed to be. Oh, we did this one in class. Ethylene, C2H4. Like that, but we found we had to put a double bond there, right? So these carbons are sp2 hybridized. You remember that one? Hybridization of the central atom in ClF2, ClF2 plus. Uh, one, two, three halogens is 21 minus one is 20. So chlorine, chlorine, that's two, four, 16. We're using up 12 to do those. Four. And so chlorine would be uh, sp3 hybridized. You got four groups. Let's see. Let's get this one. Uh, I guess we could do twenty one. Well, we know carbon dioxide has two pi bonds, right? Like that. This one we just did has one in the middle. How about this one? C2. All these hydrogens. I don't even have to draw it out. Finish it. That's an octet. That's an octet. It doesn't have any pi bonds. Okay. So these are the answer to this one. And no pi bonds, they're all signals. Uh, let's see. Tetracyanoethylene has the name. You know, if you've been introduced to any organic chemistry naming conventions, that right there will give you the structure of the molecule. Tetracyanoethylene. We did ethylene before, right? It was like this, 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 and this, and it had the hydrogens here. But instead of hydrogen, now we're going to substitute four cyano groups. The C triple bond N is a cyano group. There you go. So from the name, I can draw the molecule. What do they want us to do with this one anyway? Uh, from its Lewis structure, determine following. How many sigma and pi bonds are in the molecule? Okay, we did this one the right way before, and I did it shortcut way here. So now we want to count up how many sigmas and how many pi's are there. 
Sigmas, anywhere you've got a bond, there's a sigma. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I do that right? Four, eight, nine. So we've got nine sigmas. How many pi's? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine pi's. Got nine and nine. Let's see. Am I coming up? Wasting so much time. Do we have, uh, well, this isn't the right one, but let's see. Total number in your copy. Total number 29. Or is there more than that for yours? How high, how high does your number go up? Go up to? Uh, how many questions? Yeah. 61. 61. On this one, 61 questions in this. Okay. That wasn't my plan. But it is what it is. Because I want to be in, finished in time for us to go in the lab. Okay, I got one more hour. I'm going to have to start skipping some. <clears throat> I think what? This one's shorter. Maybe that's why I wanted to use this one. This molecule has how many sigmas and how many pi's? Well, let's see. For these organic molecules, if this is it, nothing else, that's three, four. That one's good. One, two, three, four. That one's good. One, two, three. It needs a fourth one. It doesn't have a lone pair. It actually has a double bond there. That makes one, two, three, four. One, Two. All right. But this one, we're going to have a triple there. Now, how do I know that? Well, the only way to prove it is Lewis dot structure. One, two, three, four, five times four is 20. Plus five is 25. Plus six is 31. 32, 35. 38. Okay, so we've used up three, right? A single bond for each one of these hydrogens. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, <clears throat> times two is 24. So that's uh, 14. So we do two. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Like that. Now I didn't. I didn't even wrong order. I'm supposed to put outside in. So two, four, six, eight, ten. We used up. I didn't count that right, did I? Thirty-eight. That's right. Thirty-eight. And then um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Start over again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three is nine, ten. 13. I've already got 13 single bonds, 13, 26. So that's 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There we go. Okay.
So why did I put this one here? For a similar reason for, that I did for that last molecule. Because if I put it over here, then we can't make the uh, octet for this carbon. What we're going to do is move these two over here and make a triple bond, and then move this pair over here and make a double. So molecule has how many sigmas? Well, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, see one of these. And how many pi bonds? One, two, three, three pi's. So there you go, 13 and three. Let's see, we can skip that one. See if we can beat that horse again. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's do this one. 28. If we compare BE2 and H2, Uh, it looks like it's talking about stability and bond strength. So we need to draw their uh, structures. Right? We know hydrogen is going to be. Let's see. That's not the way to do that. Hydrogen here, hydrogen here, H2 here. So hydrogen is going to have a 1s and a 1s, and we're going to make a uh, sigma, one S, and a sigma star. Here, here. This is going to have that and that. Okay. For, let's see, I better do it down here so I don't overlap. They'll scream. Beryllium. Okay. Beryllium has uh, a one S and a two S. So, I'm going to leave this one off because we're talking about the valence here. So we have a 2s, excuse me, a 2s, 2s. We're going to make that. Uh, beryllium has what? Um, in, the, in the s orbitals, it only has two. So now we have a sigma 2s and a sigma 2s star. And we'll put two down here and two up there. Now we're going to make a, that says the bond order is zero. Is that possible? Well, let's see, if the bond order is zero and the bond order is one, so hydrogen has a higher bond order than group. Well, that's true. One's greater than zero. Uh, H2 is more stable because it only contains, is that right? It only contains sigma 1s electrons, it's more stable. Well, no, four is not right because we don't have any unpaired electrons. Did I draw this one right? No, I didn't. I didn't draw that one right. Beryllium has three electrons, two of them. No, it has four. Yeah, it has four. The one S's are down here with two electrons, and the two S's are up here with two electrons. We draw a sigma and a sigma star. These two go down here, and then we have to put two up here. 
that a bond order of zero says that this molecule cannot exist. Is bond order of zero? There's no advantage, no stability advantage to making beryllium diatomic beryllium. So this is hypothetical, obviously. Hydrogen is more stable. We know this one's right. Hydrogen is more stable because it only contains sigma 1s electrons. I don't know. That's not a good question. Agree? <laughs> Anything I say, right? That's not a good question, at, at least for students at this point. I mean, I can't even figure it out. The answer says that um, three is also a good answer, but I just don't see it. Just because it has sigma 1s electrons, why would that make it more stable? It has one proton, beryllium has three. Well, that should decrease, decrease the energy, except that the bond order is zero. I think a better answer would have been to not just to say this one's higher, but uh, BE2 has a bond order of zero. Okay, let's bypass that one. Uh, okay. Which one of these is paramagnetic? What do we mean by paramagnetic? It's attracted into a magnetic field. It's, and it's attracted into the field because we have unpaired electrons. So we need to look at the unpairing of electrons. So I'll tell you what, um, should have it, here it is, this diagram in the back, that will be available on the exam. And you can see what the structure of each one of these is, I think. Yep, lithium, fluorine, oxygen, carbon. Okay, so they're all there. So we look at the uh, number of valence electrons, because these are only uh, n equals two. So carbon would be four, eight here. O2 would be 12. F2 would be 14. And Li2 would be two. Okay. So what's the order for lithium? It's sigma 2s, sigma 2s, and sigma 2s star. That's as far as we need to go with lithium. It's only got two, so we have two here. Bond order of one. What's the question? Paramagnetic. Okay, these are paired electrons. So this one's diamagnetic. How about F2? F2 goes all the way up, has a sigma 2p x, and then it has uh, a pi 2p y and z. So there are two of them here. And then it has access to I star, so sigma C. Oh, and then sigma star, 2P. Here we go. So I was looking at this one, right? Uh, sigma pi, pi star, sigma star. That's uh, no SP mixing for this one. All right, so the number of electrons, 14, so that's two, four, six. We can put four in here. And then for this one, another pi has two orbitals. Two, four, six, 10, 12. Oh, 14, excuse me. So those are paired. Right? This one is diamagnetic. 
How about oxygen? It's only got 12. Okay, so now for oxygen, since it's also no mixing, it would be the same order, but now we have these unpaired electrons. So this one is paramagnetic. Then while we're here, how about carbon? Carbon does the flip. Carbon puts this one over here and that one over there. Carbon has eight, two, four, eight. Without this one. So this one for carbon goes over here and that one goes over here and they're all paired. So carbon is dimagnetic. Okay, did I lose anybody? Okay, and you've got this diagram to go on. So you don't, have to, you don't have to memorize all that stuff. Just know how to use it. Okay, um, let me follow this. This is a good one. For how many of the following does the bond order decrease if you add one electron to the neutral molecule? All right, so we've got boron, carbon. Phosphorus is going to be the same as nitrogen for bond order. So you can look at the nitrogen layout here and just shift it up from 2P, 2S2P to 3S3P. It works the same. And then fluorine is here in this colored part. Okay, it gives you the... All right, so... For boron, if we add one electron, if we add one electron, we're adding that electron to a uh, pi bonding orbital. So that would strengthen. For how many of the molecules decrease, the order decreases. So it increases for this one, if you add an electron. Carbon, if you add an electron, it's going into a bonding orbital, so you increase this one. Phosphorus is like nitrogen. If you add one in this one, it decreases the bond order because you're adding an electron into an anti-bonding orbital. In fluorine, you're adding it into an anti-bonding orbital, so it goes down. So TUA will decrease uh, bond order if you add an electron. Okay. All right. Which one of the following has the largest bond order? Right, so this one, we look at this diagram again. Uh, N2. So the bond order for N2. We calculated uh, bonding orbitals two, four, six, eight. Minus two non bonding. So that's six divided by two, right? Is equal to three. Okay, so this has a bond order of three. If we add two electrons to it, wait a minute, we add one electron. One electron goes into the antibonding orbital. So it's going to decrease it by a half. If it's one electron, then one divided by two is a half. So this one goes down to two and a half. How about if we do two of them? Well, it decreases it to two because it also goes into an antibonding orbital. How about if we subtract an electron? Subtract electron is coming from a bonding orbital. So it also decreases the bond order to two and a half. And we subtract two electrons, also coming from the bonding orbital, that's two. So this one has a bond order of three, it's the highest of all of them. That's not always the case. Sometimes making an ion strengthens the bonds according to the molecular orbital theory. <clears throat> Okay, uh, what's the order of the following in the shortest, from shortest to longest bond? Shortest means strongest. Okay, so the bond order will give us uh, the order. 
the highest bond order here and graded to the right. So let's see. Well, we've already done hydrogen. Hydrogen is a bond order of one. Dinitrogen is a bond order of three. Uh, boron, so we looked that up here also, is a bond order of, let's see, two minus two there, two, oh, there's one. One. Carbon, here we go, carbon, is a bond order of two minus two, is two minus two. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Those cancel. Two, four minus two, yes, two. So the bond order from shortest to longest, or um, shortest to longest bond. All right, so we've got okay, it's not just the bond order. All right, this is trickier than I thought it was going to be. The longest bond. We have to take into account the size of the of the atoms too. So even though uh, boron is, well, boron is a bond order of one, and it also has uh, three, four, five, five protons. And five electrons, so it's going to be a, a pretty big. The boron, if we look at the diameter of the atoms, boron is a smaller diameter than carbon. So carbon, in addition to its diameter plus the bond order, should be closer. It should be a shorter bond than this one. So that's that's true. This one should be even shorter because it's also a smaller atom, right? Our trends left to right, decreasing radius. So we decrease the radius and increase the bond strength. So that puts these in that order correctly. And then why is this one the longest bond? Well, hydrogen only has one proton. So even though its bond order is one, it's a larger atom. I mean, the electrons are not drawn as tightly as they are with these more of these protons. So that's why hydrogen would come first. Man, that's a tough thing. You can't use just one criterion to order these. What's worse, we didn't talk about that in class during the lecture. <laughs> We're combining things that we know from the past. All right, let's get that one. Spong has a bond order of 1.5. You can calculate those. All you need to do is look at this and take account of the ions. Because if it's lost an electron or gained an electron, bond order of C2 plus, you can do that. Uh, BN, there's a heteronuclear or a heteroatomic. How would we do that one? Boron is here, so it's subject to mixing. Nitrogen, oh, nitrogen subject to mixing too, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So they're both subject to mixing which means that their, their order, uh, the molecular orbital order is going to be, uh, sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, let's see, pi, 2p, sigma 2p, 
it should be enough. So how many electrons do we have? Boron has in the two, or not in the one, we're leaving out the core. Three for boron, five for nitrogen. So we have eight. So there's two, four, and we can have four in the pie because there are two of them. One, two, three, four. So that one's diamagnetic. It is paramagnetic, well that's false. And they can't all be true. So we found our answer. It's diamagnetic, not paramagnetic. Is the bond order two? Yeah, four divided by two. Total number of electrons, 12, two, four, eight. Wait a minute. Oh, left out the one answer. Four plus eight is 12. That was tricky. If you go on this one, you say, wait a minute, that's wrong. But then you got to add in the, the, the uh, 1s and 1s star. Or the sigmas, sigma 1s and sigma 1s star has two pi bonds. Well, the bond order should tell you that. Wait a minute, that's false, isn't it? Has two pi bonds? Eight, yeah, eight minus two, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Try to make as many. Two, four, six, eight, four, six. Yeah, it does have two pi bonds, doesn't it? I mean, we can't go any higher on boron because we don't have enough electrons. Yeah, that one's true. It has two pi bonds. There's a triple bond between these two guys. You know what that tells me? That the bond order doesn't always say how many uh, bonds you have. Because if it has a bond order of two, if it has two pi bonds, we would expect a sigma and two pi's would be a triple bond, right? And we'd expect an order of three, but it's not. It's an order of two. So that generalization doesn't work. It's wrong with this thing. Try to use it as a Okay. Um let's see. All right, that's nothing new. Molecular orbital description of carbon monoxide. I think we looked at one of those in class. The oxygen is anti-bond, is um, no sp mixing, and the carbon would be sp mixing. Which one did we say won? The mixing did, didn't it? Pretty sure. The mixing one out here. So, in the molecular orbital description of carbon monoxide, the highest energy electrons occupy and about, okay. We would say, uh, 2s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2s. Pi to P and sigma to P, and then we could possibly have pi star to P, and then the next one above that is sigma star. So how many do we have? Carbon, oxygen is six, carbon is four, so it's 10. Two, four, four is eight, nine, 10. Those are paired, because sigma can only have two. So that one's 
the highest energy electrons occupy anti-bonding orbitals. That's false. Six molecular orbitals contain electrons. Well, one s, one s. So we have two here, two here. These count the valence electrons. These are the core. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 14. Six molecular orbitals contain electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that's true. Bond order is three. So four, five, six, seven, eight minus two is six divided by two is three. That's true. This one's true. There are two unpaired electrons. No. There are no unpaired electrons. Six molecular orbitals contain electrons. One, let's see, two, four, six, eight, well, 14. Is that right? That would be eight and six, 14. Yes. Yeah. Wait a minute, this is true. So that's the wrong answer. It could be B or D, right? Six molecular orbitals contain electrons. I, I, I put in the, uh, the 1S, the sigmas here. Okay. So that's two, and we have 14 electrons, right? Six for carbon, eight for oxygen, that's 14 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 14. And one, two, three, four, five, six orbitals contain electrons. Right? So this could be B and D. Right? All right. Um, You know, all right. So there we have nitrogen. Nitrogen is mixing, O is non-mixing, but nitrogen is more mixed than O is not mixed. Based on the position of this orbital right here, right, it's very close to that one. So when it combines with nitrogen, it's more likely to be mixed. So you would use the mixed structure for NO. Uh, and that would put, you know, how many, uh, uh, five for nitrogen and six, that's 11, 11. Okay. So we got 11 going in. We've got a two S let's work it from here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, and then one unpaired. So that's one, three. We got three non bonding and 11. Is that right? 11 minus three is, is eight. The NO molecule. There's a little something wrong here. I'm using up all our time. All right. You know, so we've got a sigma, 2s, sigma star, 2s, got a pi, 2p, sigma, 2p, yes, and we have a pi star, 2p, that should cover all of them. Uh, valence electrons, five plus six is 11. Two, four, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so we have three subtracted from two, six, seven, eight. Okay, five divided by two is two and a half. There it is.
That's why I get to trying to do it in my head. All right. Um, let's see. So I don't eat up all of our time. Let me scroll down. Why don't I look for? Let's see, that's a lot. Of, here we go. Fill in the blanks. What's the hybridization of the carbon orbitals for ethylene? We did that one before. It's trigonal planar SP2. Mixing form special orbitals hybridization. That's with um, the localized electron model. Valence bond theory. We have to use hybridization in order to mix native atomic orbitals to form special orbitals. Um, bonding molecular orbitals lower in energy than the atomic orbital of which it is composed. That is true. When you combine atomic orbitals, you get a mix, you get a bonding and an antibonding. The bonding is always lower than the ones that came in, atomic orbitals, and the antibonding is higher. Bond order is the difference between the number of bonding electrons and the number of antibonding divided by two. That's true. Paramagnetism causes substance to be attracted into the inducing magnetic field. Dimagnetism repels. Uh, resonance is required for certain molecules because of the localized electron model. That's when you have equivalent uh, Lewis dot structures. And they have equivalent uh, I'm not talking about formal charges. They have equivalent formal charges. Um, then you have to have resonance. Check the boxes that follow that are paramagnetic. In this case, you would have to take uh, the oxygens, the runs, the homonuclear diatomics are easy. Uh, diphosphorus down here. Treat it like nitrogen because it's in that group. You just change the number from two to three and you treat it the same way. This cyanide is the one that would be tricky. Uh, carbon is, no, it wouldn't because carbon and nitrogen are both sp mixing. So you would use the mixing format, the mixing uh, molecular orbital structure to assess that one. That one won't be a problem. And then you find out, what's the question? Which ones are paramagnetic? Look for the unpaired electrons. It doesn't matter where they are, bonding or non-bonding, as long as they're unpaired, they will give you a paramagnetic molecule. And don't forget the uh, ions. When you add up your number of electrons. Um, that's similar. Calculate the bond orders there. Carbon and nitrogen? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Glycine. Glycine is the simplest amino acid. Indicate the hybridization of each. All right, so let's do this one. And it's going to slide off. Maybe I could get. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So have we accounted for all of the electrons? Uh, if this is the structure, then this one is an octet, that one's good. This one's an octet, that one's good. Um, how about this one? All right. Well, let's just do the Lewis dot structure. I don't think that'd be simpler. All right, so we got how many hydrogens? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, oxygens are six each, 12. Carbons are four each, one, two, eight. 
and nitrogen is five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's right. Carbon's 12. Oxygen's oxygen is six. Yeah, oxygen six. Nitrogen is five. Okay, so we should have uh, 10, 20, 28. There we go. Okay. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Then one, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's 24. So we have four electrons that we need to place. Where do they go? Well, if we're showing you the actual bonds, we don't need to make any more bonds. If we put a pair here, okay, that uses up the four. But, that leaves nitrogen, not, I would think nitrogen would have that. Maybe I counted wrong. Two oxygens. I did those right here, six. One, two, three, four, five hydrogens. Two oxygens. Two carbons should be eight. There we go, 30. Right, so we have six electrons. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, now we got the, all the lone pairs here. So this one has two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. We got all our, okay. I'm happy now. So what's the question? Carbonization at each nitrogen and carbon atom. Okay. This carbon is sp2. This carbon is sp3. This nitrogen is one, two, three, four, sp3. Okay. Total bonds. Total bonds. We've got one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten bonds. How many pi bonds? Just that. Just one. Okay. Explain the concept of delocalization of electrons in SO3. Indicate how this idea relates to resonance. Okay. SO3. Uh, sulfur and oxygen, same group. So we have uh, <clears throat> four times six is 24. Okay, two, four, six, 18, two, four, six, three times six is 18, right? Yeah, 18. So if we put six around each one of these oxygens, they have octets, but sulfur doesn't. So if we make an octet for sulfur, we have three possibilities. Make a double bond here, a double bond there, or a double bond here, they're all equivalent. So we have to resonate based on the Lewis dot structures. Um, let's see, it's important. Go back to the question. Explain the concept of delocalization of electrons in SO3. Okay. What we're saying is that if we make a double bond here, 
or if we make a double bond here or here, we know that they're all equivalent bonds right, from physical evidence. So in order to make all these bonds equal, we have to delocalize that double bonding over all three bonds. A localized electron model says that we have to resonate because that's the only way we can draw it. But if we smear, if we delocalize those electrons <clears throat> over the whole molecule, we lower their energy and then we stabilize the molecule. So resonance is the way that the localized electron model deals with uh, delocalization. Because it's at its core, the valence bond theory says that those electrons belong here, nowhere else, or here, or here. So we have to resonate. But if we invoke delocalization, um, which really didn't come around until the molecular orbital model, and then we had to say, all right, they've got to be delocalized. Otherwise, we can't have equivalent bonds. So that's a long way of saying what I put in words there. Okay. All right. Are we done yet? Yeah. We're just going to keep going. Oh, it keeps going. Uh, okay. Consider three molecules, A, B, and C. Molecule A has hybridization sp3. Oh, I wish I had, I should have picked up a different one. If A has sp3 hybridization, the electronic geometry has to be tetrahedral. Um, P, B has two more effective pairs around the central atom. Two more pairs. So if we start with four and we have two more, that means we have six now. So it has to be octahedral. And that means D2SP3. Um, molecule C consists of one sigma bond and two pi bonds. If it has one sigma, and two pi's. Um, around the central atom, the only way that it can have that is let's see, one sigma. Well, let's be generic. Let's see. Well, okay, C. It doesn't mean carbon, it just means the C molecule. One sigma means that. How can you have two more pi bonds if you don't have a sigma already? You can't put another sigma over here because now you have two sigmas, right, with another atom. So if it only has one sigma, it can only have two atoms. And the only way now to have the two pi bonds is to make a triple bond. That means it's linear, which means SP hybridization. Tetrahedral bond angle, obviously. Um, the if all of the positions are occupied by atoms, then you have both 90 and 180 degrees for the octahedral molecule. And uh, SP has to be 180 degrees. There's no other option. Examples, all right. Methane is a good one for that one, or carbon tetrachloride. SF6, yeah, that's a good one. Has six bonding groups, makes it octahedral. Carbon monoxide, well, that's a good one too, to make it linear. So if this is an oxygen, like that. But in order to make a octet, you need those long pairs. So that would be two, Four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, ten electrons. That's right. Ooh. Draw a molecular orbital diagram for O two and N two using. 
explain why the removal of one electron of O2 strengthens the bond while removal of N2 weakens the bond. Okay. All you have to do is reproduce those structures from that. You don't have to memorize them. But you do have to get them in there accurately in order to answer the question because if um, remove one electron from O2 strengthens the bond. O2. O2 is on the right because we're removing an electron from an antibonding orbital. And for nitrogen, remove an electron from nitrogen, you're removing it from a binding orbital, which weakens the bond. Okay, the rest is extra information. Okay, I'm done.